In order to have the upper edge over an enemy, militaries might come up with some secretive projects in order to keep the element of surprise alive and well. From projects that involve creating a human-chimp hybrid devised by the Soviets to things you'd only imagine in sci-fi films, here are unbelievable abandoned military projects. Are you guys ready for another action-packed American Eye video? Let's get on to it! Number 13. The Goliath Track Mine If you're familiar with the RCXD from Call of Duty, you should probably meet its great-grandfather, known as the Goliath Track Mine. This unmanned demolition vehicle was electrically powered and carried anywhere from 130 to 220 pounds of high explosives, depending on the model. They were meant to be used in order to attack enemy tanks, disrupt infantry formations, demolish bridges, or other strategic buildings. Built by the Germans, these reached the front lines in 1942, and a few were even used against the Allies. Most of the time, they failed to reach their targets, but they can inflict a lot of damage when they actually did. The project wasn't continued by the Germans, and it ended service in 1945, but similar technology still exists, as you probably noticed. Number 12. The VT Tank What's better than a tank with one measly cannon? How about a tank with two cannons that fire simultaneously? This twin-gun, turretless main battle tank was first produced in 1974 and was a joint project between Great Britain and Germany. It required a four-man crew to operate and use a powerful V-12 engine. The main reason this was being developed was to reach a higher weapon efficiency and increase the possibility of hitting a target. Due to some drawbacks in practicality and the uprising of the Leopard 2 tank, the project was halted, but it was definitely an interesting concept. Number 11. The Super Tank Towards the end of the invasion of the Pacific, the Americans were constructing these massive super tanks in order to evade the mainland of Japan. They weigh 100 tons each and would have fired a large 105mm cannon and would have almost been used mostly as some type of artillery piece. It performed well in tests, especially against concrete, and would reduce fortifications to rubble in a matter of seconds. Only putting out a speed of 8 miles an hour, it certainly didn't have the speed that they were looking for, but it definitely possessed the firepower. The armor was extremely thick compared to other tanks at that time, containing 12 inches of steel in the front. Number 10. The Battle Mole Imagine a vehicle that could travel through water on land and go underground by mechanically drilling its way to the next target. The Soviets had an interesting idea with this one. Also known as the Subterrene, this experimental vehicle could successfully move underground at a speed of about 3 miles an hour. The goal of it would be to travel underground, detonate explosives under the military's installations, and then that would cause an earthquake, destroying many things up above. It also ran on nuclear power, and the first test proved to be successful. It destroyed a large test bunker covering a range of 6 miles. Everyone was quite amazed, and they thought they came up with some kind of secret super device. During the second test, the whole thing blew up, and it was never tested again. Number 9. The Avro Car, Canada the Avro car was designed by a Canadian aircraft company and was part of the U.S.'s secret Air Force project. This might have been the reason why people claimed to have seen flying saucers near Area 51. This disc-like flying saucer was hoping to be a revolutionary device that wouldn't even need a runway to take off. The aircraft was unable to hover like they had planned, and before modifications could be achieved, the funding ran out in 1961. The U.S. began to lose all hope that they would have a flying saucer in their arsenal. However, this thing did fly in the sky for about 75 hours, which is quite intriguing. Number 8. The Schwerer Gustav This massive railway gun that we see here was used for destroying the French fortifications of the Maginot Line. It was thought that these would be the strongest fortifications during the 1940s, but they proved that wrong quickly. In any case, the Schwerer Gustav wasn't even really needed to win the battle, and it was deployed during Operation Barbarossa and the Battle of Sevastopol, where it managed to destroy munitions depots 100 feet underground. The main reason it was abandoned was because the Soviets were coming to town, and the Germans felt that they needed to destroy it so it wouldn't be used against them. The massive feat of engineering weighed 1,350 tons, and could fire shells an estimated 29 miles. The barrel itself was a mass of 106 feet long and shot an ammunition that was 80 centimeters in diameter. It's believed that pieces of the gun were recovered by the Soviets or at least found by them in a forest north of Urbach in eastern Germany. Number 7. The 1K17 Shoddy One of the secret weapons the Soviets were keeping up their sleeves was the 1K17 Shoddy, which was a self-propelled laser vehicle. The powerful vehicle used a battery with laser projections mounted on a turret. These were created with the intention of disabling optical electronic equipment of enemy missiles or ground and aerial vehicles. They hoped it would be capable of shooting missiles or planes out of the sky quickly and effectively. The project began in the 1970s and continued until the 1980s. 
The Soviets, of course, wanted to keep the whole thing secret, but with the US's spy network, they were able to obtain information from defectors about this mysterious vehicle. The Soviets eventually deemed the project to be way too expensive anyways, and it was abandoned. Thankfully, we never have to deal with these laser tanks in battle. Number 6. The M247 Sergeant York Named after a hero in World War I, this anti-aircraft gun was designed from 1977 to 1985. Fifty of these were produced for a whopping $6.97 billion initially by Ford and it showed problems almost immediately. The prototype had issues with the tracking radar and it couldn't even distinguish the difference between trees and helicopters. The turrets moved too slow for fast jet-powered aircraft, plus even more problems trying to work in cold weather. In 1982, the unmanned anti-aircraft machine went rogue and even fired a review stand, causing several injuries. Safe to say this thing was out of control. When other weapons began to came out, they were wondering why they were even still testing this horrendous machine. One more test was finally done, using the drone as a target practice, and it couldn't even hit that. After eight years of failure, they decided to give up on it. Number 5. Perora the Germans knew that in order to secure a stronghold over Europe, they needed to invest a little extra money in propaganda and spreading their ideology the best they could. In order to complete this goal, a huge brainwashing camp was installed on the coast of the Baltic Sea in northern Germany. It was almost like a resort for the Third Reich where they could show their power and the natural beauty of Germanic lands to secure loyalty to the cause. This place housed the cinema, swimming pools, theaters, and much more. Construction began in 1939 and it was a remarkable structure and meant to last for centuries. Made out of concrete, this was quite a revolutionary settlement at the time, and many SS recruits were overwhelmed by its striking appearance. Number 4. The ASM-135 ASAT America definitely didn't like the fact that other countries were getting their satellites into space and then spying on us. The ASM was designed to be launched from F-15s and fired at enemy satellites into space. This technology cost an estimated $5.3 billion, which was much more than the expected $500 million. It was probably never even put to use except against our own satellites for practice. Number 3. The Human Z You should be glad that this next project is abandoned and requires some science that many would deem unacceptable by all standards. Experiments to create a half-human, half-chimpanzee date back to the 1920s by a Russian scientist named Ila Inovov. This weirdo tried some experiments that we probably shouldn't get into, but we'll just say they didn't work. He thought he can create a human hybrid using artificial insemination, and needless to say, he failed. The man was eventually arrested, but his idea of creating a human Z has intrigued many. Also known as the Human Z or Chuman, legends exist to the world about mysterious apes that were possibly created. In the 1980s, it was believed that a female chimpanzee became pregnant. Imagine human chimp hybrids taking over the streets of your home. Number 2. The Marks Generator Hidden within a forest near Moscow is a strange abandoned machine that might make some kind of confused. This massive configuration of tubes and coils is what's known as the Marx Generator and it's a shockingly powerful machine. This strange device is capable of generating lightning bolts. At its peak performance, it was able to generate a discharge of lightning equal to all the power generators in Russia, but only for a fraction of a second. It could create a lightning bolt over 100 feet high. Why would the Soviets want to build such a powerful electrical device? This was to test out how planes and other equipment would hold up against lightning strikes or to see how they would react against electromagnetic pulses. The testing facility has still been put to use even after the Soviet times to see how it would work against new Sukhoi aircraft. But before we get to our number one, we'd like you guys to use your imagination and try to think of what secret weapon the government could be hiding from us. Let us know in the comments section and the best answer will get featured in an upcoming video. And number 1. The Prototype PZL-230F Scorpion This Polish prototype jet almost hit the mass production lines in the late 1980s. This compact aircraft would have only been about 32 feet long and extremely lightweight. It was also made of cheap, reliable materials, but still well armored for aircraft at that time. Its design also allowed for it to take off and land on shorter runways. It would have been used to destroy tanks, similar to the 810 Thunderbolt. The reason why it was never put into mass production still remains somewhat of a mystery. Many thought it was truly one of the most advanced aircrafts at that time and could have at least served as an export to foreign countries. So which one did you think was the most interesting? Let us know in the comments section and we'll see you next time.